Um, good day uh, to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Siti Hasna Hassan. Uh, today, I will cover the topic uh, about uh, integrated marketing communication planning process. The successful global integrated marketing communication requires paying attention to a number of factors. The company must understand uh, the international market culture where it is best selling the product. Just look at uh, examples of uh, the most successful uh, global uh, company uh, such as uh, McDonald's. If you look at McDonald's, even though the company actually originated from the US, but 65% of the revenue for the company is coming outside from the US. We have more than thousands of outlets in 100 over countries over the world. These are one of the successful companies uh, expanding uh, very uh, fast in fast food uh, market. So what uh, we need to do uh, to be a successful company in international market? First, we must have a borderless uh, marketing plan. Work best. Uh, firm must allow the individual countries uh, to modify the marketing plan accordingly. Uh, to match with the uh, cultural environment in the country. So what we have to do is we need to think globally but act locally. So the first thing that we need uh, in advertising, we must uh, have a plan uh, in conveying our advertising and marketing strategy. So to this topic, uh, we'll cover on the component or element uh, in uh, integrated uh, marketing communication uh, process. In uh, this uh, process, uh, we have uh, seven components that we must uh, look at. Uh, the, first con the first component is context. Context consists of three elements or three C, uh, which is customers, competitor and communication. From the analysis of 3C, decision about the target market and product positioning can be made. It is a joint decision because one affects the another. Next, we must uh, look at or design the communication objective uh, strategy. We must formulate the best strategy or communica communication message uh, for our uh, advertising or marketing campaign. From the objectives come the budget and selection of the appropriate IMC component or medium to convey our message. Again, it is a mutual decision because uh, the budget impact which IMC component can be used and the selection of IMC component affect the budget. The first element uh, in context is customers. Customers, in customer, we must look at these four groups. First is current customer. Current customer, we need to analyze who are our current customers. Then we must look at who are our former customer. Former customer, uh, we need to have uh, information about why actually they left our company and uh, buy our competitor product. Then we must also look at our potential customer. Later on, it might be uh, we are targeting uh, to these uh, potential customers for our product. We also must look at our uh, competitor customer. Why do they uh, buy our competitor product? <coughs> In designing ad, it is important to know which group is being targeted. So it's really important uh, to know our customer as uh, as in depth as possible the second uh, phase of the company context analysis is examining uh, the competitor the process should start uh, by identifying major competitor a firm uh, most direct competitor then examining uh, which competitor communication strategy and tactic are the competitor using uh, we also must look at uh, the available information for example, we must look at our secondary data. You know, we can look at their web page. We can look at their annual report. These are the things 
we must uh, uh, get the information that help us to make the decision uh, about uh, our marketing strategy later on. And we also can conduct uh, research to get primary data on what other people are saying about competitor product. The third element uh, in the context uh, is communication. We must look at uh, how uh, the company are communicating with the customer, with the uh, shareholder, with the employee, uh, with the channel member. This is really important. And we also must look at uh, communication used by the industry and competitor. All this information uh, provide guidance to marketers in developing an integrated marketing campaign uh, successfully. Then, once the context analysis is complete, the marketing group can focus on the target market or the market itself. Uh, they may be targeted a segment that no one is reaching or communicating to, or maybe they are the target market that are being served by the competitor but not very well. Other market may be saturated with the opinion. There are certain things or certain criteria uh, to make sure that market segment is viable. First, uh, we must look at uh, the individual within the segments are homogeneous, which means uh, they are sharing similar things. And we also, uh, the second one, we must look at, uh, we must look at uh, if this, uh, whether the segments are, can be differentiated from the population, it's really important to do that. Then the market segment is large enough to be financially viable to target with a separate a marketing campaign. Because to do marketing campaign, we need uh, to spend uh, money. Where it will be very costly. So we want to make sure that we will get back the revenue. So it's, that's why we really have to make sure that uh, the target mar market is big enough. Then last but not least, the market segment must be reachable through some type of media or communication method. This is really important later on for our comic IMC component. How to do the market segment? There are few methods that we can use to segment the market. Uh, we, are, we can use methods such as demographic, psychographic, generation, or maybe based on geographic or geodemographic or based on benefit uh, segmentation or usage segmentation. First, we will look at uh, demographic. The basic demographic segmentation uh, is gender. Gender is a common demographic segmentation wearable because there are significant differences between males and females and because it's easy to identify each market segment. And also, male and female purchase different products. And they also use the same product, but sometimes they use it differently. So the way even marketer com communicate to the gender can be very. Uh, there is a lot of example uh, of uh, advertisement uh, targeting women with different uh, different uh, strategy compared to how they targeting the male uh, segment. And we also uh, can segment the market based on age. Uh, we can target a specific age group or maybe we can combine other variables with the age. Uh, for example, children are very attractive uh, segment. Obviously, they are huge different in the product uh, uh, children use versus uh, the product that adults use. For example, statistics shows that uh, children spend about 30 million uh, them for themselves to buy a product and also we uh, we can be a very influential uh, to uh, decision making we also can segment based on the education income ethnic group these are all examples of demographic segmentation then uh, we we will look at a uh, psychographic segmentation Sometimes demographics are relatively easy to identify, but they do not fully explain uh, why consumers purchase uh, 
certain product. This is more like on psychography, especially like uh, explaining about uh, consumption purchase behavior. For example, we can use AIO measures based on the activities, interests, and opinion of the consumers and combine with demographic profile. These are one of the segmentation strategy. One of the well-known uh, measurement of psychographic is uh, WALS2, uh, Wells, uh, also known as a Wells uh, typology. You actually uh, can go online and look at this uh, typology. You can take a certain um, uh, survey and then they will actually uh, uh, group you to certain segment. There are at least eight uh, different segments in uh, Wells which is innovator, thinker, achiever, uh, experiencer, a believer, striker, maker, or survivor. These are uh, segments that you can differentiate under uh, walls uh, segmentation. And we also se can segment uh, the market based on the generation. All right, now, uh, We have generation Y between uh, people who are born between 1978 uh, to 2002. Uh, these, the characteristic of these people are, you know, they are more um, techno uh, sapient, uh, they are more open to the technology. Then we have Generation X, whoever born in 1965 to 1977. These are the people who are really focused on a family and children. Then we have younger boomer who ever born between 1954 to 1964. They are also focused on family and home because they are now are quite old people. Then we have older boomer, people who are born between 1945 and 1953. They are the one who are actually uh, living at home as an elderly uh, people. So all these uh, all these uh, segmentation are really important uh, to later on uh, to know which uh, people that we want to target or which uh, market or group that we want to target. Then we also can combine uh, demographic census data, uh, geographic information, and psychographic information. Uh, this combination known as geodemographic segmentation. One of the well-known uh, geodemographic segmentation system is PRISM. P -R -I -Z -M. You know, these are the segments used to divide uh, consumers in US. There are at least uh, 62 market actually a uh, market segment in US based on the prism. And then uh, another segmentation we can use is benefit segmentation. These segmentation actually focus on the advantage uh, of advantages of consumers receive from the product rather than uh, the characteristic of the industry itself. One example is fitness industry. People exercise for different reasons. Uh, the three most common benefit segments are winner, dieter, and self -improver. You know, Winner is normally people who are exercise uh, for themselves. Uh, this has become uh, their lifestyle. They like to exercise. Dieter. They exercise because they want to lose weight. These are the people under the diet. And then we also have self-improver. They, they have to exercise because they have been told to exercise by their uh, doctors or physicians uh, because uh, they have some health problem. So they want to exercise because they want to improve their health uh, uh, condition. Then we also can segment based on usage segmentation. Uh, usage of purchase is three. It's really important to uh, segment the market. For example, we can have uh, we can cluster the consumer as higher user of the product or maybe light user of product. And for example, hotel industry can do this. All right? They say um, they they do not really frequently use the hotel. Then we will say they are light user. Then what are the uh, strategy that we can use to target uh, this specific group. So target a specific cluster creating a unique marketing approach. These are the one thing that you can we, we can do. And then the message to be a light user or product will be very different from then uh, a heavy user of the product. Uh, that are 
all under the segmentation uh, to know uh, which market to target. Then now we are moving to product position. You know, product, product positioning is really important. What is product positioning? It is a perception created in the consumer's mind regarding the nature of the company and its product relative to the, to the competitor uh, product. Uh, this is how people, cons people perceive about our product in the market. Positioning is created by factors such as uh, product quantity, uh, price, distribution, uh, image, and marketing communication. Company needs to be very careful to consider where they are positioned in the market. Uh, please then develop an ad to reinforce uh, that image or to move customers to image that they desire uh, to have. This is really important in positioning strategy. There are few strategies that can be used in positioning. There are at least uh, seven strategies. First, we have a product. We can position the product based on product attribute. Uh, this involves uh, promoting a unique attribute that is superior or different from the competitor. And we also uh, can uh, use competitor to establish a position uh, by accomplishing, uh, constructing, constructing the company brand against the competing brand. Or maybe we can use uh, application or the use of the product uh, to position our product uh, by creating a memorable set of use uses of a product or application that allow it to stand out from the competitor product. Or maybe we can also use a price and quality in position our product uh, by emphasizing value uh, or emphasizing high quality with little mention of high price. Or maybe we can also uh, you know, position our product based on product class, for example, a beverage uh, type of category of product uh, or product class or uh, uh, breakfast food or sport cars. These are an examples. Now, maybe we can also, the last but not least, we also can position our product based on cultural symbol, uh, how we can connect uh, our product uh, or brand to some cultural symbol that is recognized and known by the consumers. However, we have to remember uh, positioning is never complete or uh, fixed because consumer and society are very dynamic, they are keep changing. In international arena, product positioning is very challenging but it's very important. So the position uh, that is used in one country uh, however, may not be a, appropriate for another country because the perception of consumer are very different. The attitude, the behavior, we must look at all these aspects. And we must remember that positioning is really important or maybe a critical component in image building for the company and for the brand. Once we decided our positioning, then we must look at uh, our communication objective. An effective IMT planning process requires a quality communication objective. This objective ties with the organization context, uh, the 3C, the target market, the positioning approach to the selection of budget and IMT component, uh, which is the medium of uh, communication tools. Communication objective also guide an account executive and advertising creative in designing the actual advertising campaign. This is really important to look at all these elements. Because sometimes um, objective uh, communication objective can be varied depending uh, of the company or product or brand. Uh, sometimes we just want to create or develop brand awareness for the product or maybe we want to increase category demand or maybe our objective communication is to change customer belief and it's cheap or maybe we want to enhance purchase action this is something to do with the consumer connectivity strategy then we want to maybe 
uh, encourage people or consumer repeat purchases? What are the communication strategies that we can think of to uh, consumer to do this? Now, sometimes we can you put voucher in our advertisement. So this will encourage action. Uh, sometimes we, uh, within a different uh, time period, we want to build customer traffic. Or maybe we want to enhance firm image, or increase market share, or increase sales, or reinforce purchase decision. These are some of the communication objectives uh, that are available uh, in marketing. The key is to match the objective to the medium and message that we want to convey to the consumer at the end. Alright, uh, budget. The final two steps in IMC planning process is establish uh, the communication budget and selecting the IMC component. Both decisions are usually made concurrently. The marketing communication budget is based uh, on the communication objective and the marketing objective. Budget varies considerably from customer market to business to business market. It is unrealistic to assume that there is a direct relationship between advertising and sales because it all depends on our marketing uh, and communication objective. One of the things that we can do uh, in planning our budget uh, is, uh, or maybe it's a method of determining a marketing communication budget, we can use percentage of sales. We can use the need, uh, the competition. We can use what we can afford uh, in advertising. And we also can put objective and task uh, type of or method of budgeting. Or maybe payout planning. Or last but not least, we can use a quantitative uh, model uh, to do our budgeting. For example, uh, under the percentage of sales. Set the communication budget as certain percent of this year's sales or next year's sales forecast. It is simple to use and uh, as a result popular. The problem is that it works in opposite direction uh, of uh, what may be needed. And we also can uh, do our budgeting based on meet the competition. We want to match uh, what uh, competitors are doing. So seek because we want to prevent uh, market share loss. So uh, in very highly competitive market, we need to do this. Examples, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. We are actually neck to neck in the advertising or communication strategy. Dollar may not be spent efficiently in this strategy. Sometimes they have to spend uh, so much just uh, for, because they want to be a market leader in the market. We also can use a method uh, what we can afford. Uh, these are the most uh, the most of the small company we, we, we use this. Uh, but actually, uh, when you use this method, you are actually not understanding the importance of marketing uh, in communicating uh, your brand image. For example, uh, if you look at statistic, there is a statistic showing that 80% of uh, product fail in the market because uh, lack of advertising. It means uh, they spend very little in doing uh, their advertising or, or marketing campaign. But we also can uh, use a method objective and task uh, to set the budget. Uh, this uh, is based on what it will cost to accomplish communication and the marketing objective uh, that has been established. Uh, most marketers see uh, this as the best method of budgeting. It is not being used uh, uh, by about half of the firm. Alright, we also can use uh, payout planning. Payout planning involves setting uh, a budget based on ratio to sales or market share. The method usually results uh, in more uh, money being spent early in the process uh, when you want to 
uh, you know, uh, introduce or launch the product, you spend a uh, certain amount of money, big amount of money. Then, uh, when uh, the product of when the product or brand will establish in the market, you uh, cut the cost or lower the percent uh, for communication strategy. Uh, this is also based on threshold effect, or also known as a break even effect. And we also can use uh, the last method, which is a quantitative model uh, using the historical data. This is like a computer simulation uh, strategy using a certain software. We can actually uh, a target of what are the sales uh, based on historical data and how much money that we have to spend. Uh, then we create a model actually uh, saying that okay, we have to when you spend this much money, you will get uh, this much return. Uh, these are the things in uh, budgeting or method in doing budgeting for IMC planning. Last element. Uh, or decision uh, which is done concurrently with budget is the selection of INC component. You know, there are many tools or medium to do uh, INC communication. You know, we never uh, should look down on traditional advertising uh, because uh, even though it's traditional but it can actually reach the mass media especially uh, to create awareness for our brand or product. Alright, examples are uh, television, uh, radio, billboard. There are so many uh, other examples under the traditional uh, advertising tools. And we can also use uh, trade promotion. Uh, how much money that we want to spend for trade promotion to introduce our product. Maybe we can use uh, consumer promotion. And we also can spend our time on media selection. For example, on television, how much we want to spend for television, how much we want to spend for radio, uh, how much we want to spend uh, for billboard. These are examples under uh, media selection. And we can also look at uh, other alternative media spending. For example, uh, online uh, advertising, mobile advertising, social media advertising. So we need uh, to budget out how much we want to spend accordingly uh, to all these uh, media. It's not an easy task uh, to decide which component will be the most effective. Uh, not only is the budget factor but also uh, it depends on the communication objective uh, that we discussed earlier on. However, we must remember uh, global, globally it's not uh, easy. It's not easy, easy task uh, to do IMC planning at the global stage, but it can be done. So global IMC efforts are guided by IMC planning. Uh, national differences, cultural uh, concerns, languages issue, and other challenges must be viewed in light of the target market individual uh, company intend to serve. These are the things. Um, all these seven elements must be taken into consideration. Uh, to develop a very uh, quality uh, communication uh, planning. As I said early on, we must uh, plan a borderless marketing plan that can suit uh, each country easily, a very dynamic marketing plan that really take into account all the other uh, factors uh, in the environment. We must think globally but act locally. We must have a partnership with a local people in the country that we want to launch our product, they are the ones who really understand their customers. So it's really important uh, to do all these things uh, to have very effective uh, communication uh, strategy. We must have. We must also have a you know, solid communication objective uh, that we want to achieve in a certain uh, period of time. Uh, these are the things uh, in the integrated marketing communication planning. I hope it will really help you to understand uh, what we have been discussing uh, from the beginning. Uh, you have to remember there are certain components that you must remember. Uh, for example, the 3C, 
under the context, the target market, and what are the methods uh, of segmentation that you can use. We also, we also must look at what are the methods or strategy uh, to do positioning. Uh, then we must look at uh, objective. What are your objective? This is really important because uh, at different stage we need uh, we must have a different uh, communication strategy. Uh, especially when you want to launch a product, you cannot expect uh, to have return of revenue uh, immediately. So it's really important to plan everything very carefully. And then you also must look at um, what are the budget available for you to select later on on the IMC component. It's all work or time together. You cannot like miss one thing. And uh, for example, you have very small budget, but you want to go uh, use uh, you know uh, mass media to communicate uh, to the consumer. So it's quite impossible because, as you know, let's say if you are using television, the cost will be very high. So you must have uh, proper planning in budgeting uh, to communicate your marketing objective. These are the things that you must remember in. Uh, Integrated marketing communication. Mm -hmm. uh, another good example beside McDonald uh, is um, Nestle. If you look at uh, one of the clips that have been shown uh, before uh, discussing this topic is uh, Nestle. One hundred years of being by your side. One hundred years of memories held closest 
to the heart. Uh, been in Malaysian market for about 100 years. Uh, this is what uh, people say. If you look at Nestle's product, it actually uh, become a part of Malaysian lifestyles. Uh, we can actually uh, link to our uh, childhood when we are you know, uh, drinking uh, Milo, for example. Let's say what will happen if you know, Nestle decide to take uh, this product uh, out of the uh, Malaysian market. I'm sure most of the uh, Malaysian consumers who are consuming Milo since they are very young will be very upset. So these are the things Malaysia are, Nestle are doing very well in international market, not just in Malaysia but also in uh, other Asian countries or in other uh, European countries. These are the things uh, that uh, Nestle have done. They have very uh, good uh, uh, you know, integrated marketing communication, not just on uh, the product, but also in developing the nation uh, in the country. For example, Milo been there and doing CSR uh, marketing for very long time. They will come to the school, they will give a free drink to all these children, uh, you know, uh, after running for very long in very hot sun. These are the things that they are doing in uh, you know, international market. Thank you very much. I hope uh, you really had a good uh, information from me. Thank you.